Hey, how's it going there, space people? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast today in space. I just got back from Amsterdam and it was a lot of fun. It really was. It was great to get away. It was there for work. Got to spend the weekend and do my own thing. Travel, walked around the city and got to see uh, a lot of great things. I really like what Amsterdam has going for them. And I love uh, all the efficiency that I see with a lot of things there. So that was that was great. And I came home and I also got this, you know, for those that are just listening, uh, I got this amazing new SpaceX shirt, uh, Nuke Mars, which of course is, you know, one of the ways that we could actually terraform Mars, you know, not actually dropping a a nuclear bomb, an atomic bomb on Mars. No, (laughs) like it's about slowly adding uh, radiation to warm the planet so that way life could live there. You melt the, the caps so that water is actually able to to flow so that things can grow and it's the right temperature so that things that we know can actually grow there and we could actually potentially make it someplace where we could live in the future, you know, without needing all of these crazy underground, uh, you know, colonies and, and geodesic domes to have life actually live there. And, you know, every time you went outside, you'd have to suit up into a, an EVA suit and and all that. So actually terraforming it would be a way to do that. Now, can you do that? I don't know. I don't know if that's actually really possible. I would like to know, you know, obviously radiation wise, you know, if you're, if you're dumping a little bit of radiation into the atmosphere or, 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 or somehow, I'm not sure how that even de- deploy it. We'll, we'll do some research and we'll dive into this and we'll do that in a future episode. But it's just so fascinating. Like, yeah, obviously radiation is in space and there's solar radiation and stuff. So obviously it's about how much radiation, what is the dose, what is the exposure, how much and how much amount of time, how what dosage and what amount of time are you actually being exposed? That's the danger. And yeah, like what, it, would you constantly have radiation afterwards? Is there a tiny amount you can add to the atmosphere that would dissipate and, what's the word I'm looking for, decay, uh, decay to a point where it would be okay for us? I don't know those answers, but they're they're fun questions, and and I love the idea. We gotta we gotta at least look into it, get into a position where we have to ask, what would happen? <laughs> that's I love this, so I love this stuff. Uh, definitely one of my new favorite shirts. So that's pretty cool. So so it was it was a good time. We also on my trip we also had the landing attempt for Chandrayaan two, India's attempt to land on the moon with the lander and rover. We're gonna talk about that in orbital news next. And yeah, I just want to say thanks for joining us. I've got a pretty busy week, so we're just going to do orbital news this week. And then I'll do next week, I'll, I'll do more about my thoughts that I had in Amsterdam. You know, I was going to fit it into this week's episode, but I want to spend more time on on what I'm really trying to say with it. So uh, that it comes to you guys as the best thing possible. So without further ado, let's start the orbital news segment for this week and talk about the mystery behind did India successfully land on the moon and what is the condition of the rover and lander right now? On September 6th, I was walking around the city of Amsterdam when my phone alerts me that India was attempting to land the Chandrayaan 2 mission. I did try to watch it live, but that's not really a smart thing to do in a city you don't know, especially when you have the chance of falling into the canal if you're not smart. So I had to wait to follow up on what happened. And the story today still might be developing as I found out from news that just came out in the last 24 hours. But let's start our orbital news segment here. India's ISRO attempted to land the Vikram lander and Pragyan rover on the moon. At about 2.1 kilometers above the surface of the moon, the ISRO lost contact with the rover and lander. At the time, it seemed like a devastating loss, and we'll get more into what happened on the live broadcast, but short story is I applaud the ISRO for giving everyone access to watch the mission live. They won regardless because the outcome now is more people know about India's space program. Plus, we're not even sure if the moon landing is a failure. You know, they only lost contact with the rover, and right now, the Chandrayaan-2 team is on Earth doing everything they can to communicate with the lander. They were able to observe the lander touched down on the surface with the help of the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter still functioning above, but to paraphrase 
what they saw. They said it looked like it landed hard, but didn't look destroyed. You know, in the latest news from uh, the last 24 hours states that the lander has been seen on the surface and is sitting at an angle, which could mean a few things. You know, was the surface just uneven? Did it impact harder than intended? And now it's, you know, that, that one side is actually embedded into the lunar surface. More answers to come, I'm sure, but none yet, only guesses. In the meantime, the ISRO team will continue its attempts to reestablish communication with the lander and rover until September 21st. On that date, the lander's time in the sun ends and a 14-day Earth lunar night comes over the South Pole where they are tempted, where they attempted the landing. We at Today in Space are wishing the team all the best in their attempts to make contact and find answers to what happened. You know, we'll, we'll keep you updated here. But one of the real noteworthy moments of the mission was when the Prime Minister of India, Modi, embraced the, the leader of the mission when they received word that they had lost contact and, and you know, potentially failed uh, the mission with the lander and the rover. Now, it's important to note here that I do not know the situation in India. I know from talking with people whose family are still in India that things are very complicated in the country. I mean, who, who, who are we to talk in the U.S., right? It's crazy here. I'm not supporting any individual by talking about this, but I, I am supporting the embrace, the action of support in the time of failure. Not shame but embrace and support. It's, it's a powerful message. You know, and, and trying to go to space is hard to start. Never mind launching an orbiter, lander, and rover to touch down on the surface of the moon. But the cultural impact of a leader embracing one of their own after a failure is a great move. And it was one of my highlights in space this week. You know, regardless the person behind it, the action, that, that action of embracing one another in times of failure is something we need to see more of today. You know, and I, I get the feeling from U.S. culture that if someone fails, things are over. You know, it's the end. And most people are too afraid to fail and they never even try. But in reality, you if you keep at it and you don't give up, the failures are just part of your story. And that that's my takeaway from India and the ISRO's mission from this week. Embrace the failure and work together to do it again and again and again, and learn from your mistakes and focus on the next mission. And I mean, look, if we look back at history, our attempts, the early attempts, the space race, uh, the US and Russia, if you look at the end game, which is that the US won the space race and got to the moon first, if you just looked at that end result, you would think that getting to the moon is easy or that it's, it's totally possible, but every, almost every single moment leading up to that, the US, was behind the Soviet Union in the space race and and way behind. Like, it wasn't even possible. Even, even in the U.S., we didn't even think it was going to be possible. But that's because they failed miserably, <laughs> honestly, and, and, and lives were lost. This it, failure is part of the journey, and I really dug the, mes the, the message from this mission, and I, I just I wish them all the luck. Uh, in the future, and hopefully they'll get in contact, and we'll find out more about what happened. And this just brings up a great international. Uh, this this gets everyone in the space industry across the world working together. They want to help if they can. Um, you know, these these are the kind of things that you 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 read about. You 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 watch a documentary about 10, 15 years later when someone finally comes around and says, "Hey, what happened in their search to get the the Vikram lander and the Pragyan?" rover to, to, to communicate again. What happened with that? Who, who was involved? Who, who helped? So great, great mission. And that does it for this week's episode. We'll, we'll hit you guys back up next week again. Thank you for listening. As always, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, wherever you get your podcast. We're also on YouTube. Subscribe to us there. Click the bell, which is over here. I did this last time. I pointed the wrong way. I think this is the right side. Uh, anyways... <laughs> Subscribe there, hit the bell. Uh, that way you can find out when we get a new episode. Uh, we're putting out these episodes in full, and then we're putting out clips uh, because that's how people watch science. We're adjusting to what 
you are looking for. So if you'd like to help us out, give us feedback, hit us up in the comments below. Uh, always welcoming constructive uh, feedback. So uh, please hit us up down there. Even ask us questions. If you guys want us to talk about something specific, just hit us up. We're definitely interested. We're doing this weekly, so we, we, can, we can change things up. If you guys want to talk about something else, let's do it. Um, in the meantime, I'll keep sharing my crazy thoughts and my interests and we'll go from there. And if you want to help support the podcast, because it is free, you guys get this every week for free. If you want to help, you can also get something in return by getting something 3D printed with us at AG 3D Printing. It is our idea workshop where we help bring ideas into reality of not just our own, not just props for the show and for us to help communicate science better, and just to do cool stuff like we just put up on our Instagram page, AG 3D Printing, where you can literally just print stuff from a designer online for free that is something you use in your house. And that's the future of where 3D printing is going to go. And you can get started with us. You know, I am, I am, uh, for lack of a better word, a, a, an expert user of, of the 3D printers that I have. There are lots out there, but I really know how to use mine. And you can help us by helping me help you bring something into reality. Do you have an idea that you've always wanted to do? You might want to sell it, or maybe you just want a gift for somebody, or maybe you just want to make 10 of them. You just want to make 10 of something and and bring that into reality. We can do that by leveraging 3D printing and if you need design services. So uh, that helps the podcast get funded, get the lights on, keep us spreading love and spreading science here. So if you'd like Hit us up there, ag3d-printing.com if you want to learn more. If you just want to learn about 3D printing, you can go there too. You can also check our Instagram page, ag3d printing. We do a ton of stuff there. The podcast also has uh, an Instagram page, at Today in Space Pod. We're also Today in Space Pod on Twitter. Facebook page, Today in Space Podcast. Woo! All right, that's it for business. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Today in Space. Bye.